Hey Rebel Razor, I'm Alan Voivod and this is Star Wars 7x7, your daily dose of Star Wars joy. And thank you so much for joining me for it and thank you especially to the people who make this possible for you with their support at patreon.com slash SW7X7. All right, so we are talking about the Acolyte. We're doing another little deep dive situation related to well, not really episode six, but everything that we've seen thus far this season, and in particular, talking about Chimere and the possibility that he is a Sith Lord. I mean, he identified himself as a Sith to Master Saul. So, yeah, I mean, you don't necessarily take that on unless you are relatively high up in the rankings of where the Sith are. I mean, even though the Inquisitors, for example, reported to Darth Vader, who was Dark Lord of the Sith, the Inquisitors couldn't even call themselves Sith. That being said, the whole hierarchy of the Sith is basically in flux now. There had been an established hierarchy in Legends. It hasn't really been reestablished in canon, but we get the idea that there can really only be two Sith Lords, the Master and the Apprentice, right? So even though Emperor Palpatine was kind of referred to maybe as a Sith Emperor, he is still a Sith Lord. And you can even think to the novel Dark Lords of the Sith by Paul S. Kemp that came out. It was one of the first of the novels in the then rebooted Star Wars canon. And there were two of them, two Dark Lords of the Sith, the Master and the Apprentice. That would be Palpatine and Vader, right? Now, Chimer hasn't referred to himself as a Sith Lord, but he has said that he is looking for a pupil, but then specifically use the word Acolyte. And if you look at Star Wars Legends, the title of Acolyte is basically right underneath Apprentice. And so with Darth Vader, for example, being the apprentice to Emperor Palpatine, then that does suggest the presence of a master kicking around at this time in the galaxy that Chimere is reporting to. But we don't have any positive confirmation of that just yet. And that would be something that the makers of the Acolyte might be holding on to for us as part of a reveal that might happen at the end of the season. And don't let yourself get fooled necessarily by the fact that Chimer was referring to himself as the master when Chimer was in his hello kind of disguise, his smuggler slash traitor slash acquirer of unusual objects disguise, right? Even though he was talking to me about the master, that just meant that he was the person in charge of May during her apprenticeship, during her audition to become an acolyte. It doesn't necessarily mean that Darth Chimer, to, to <laughs> have a little fun with it, is actually the master in a master apprentice situation. I think there's a rule of two going on. I think the master in the rule of two we have not met yet. And it would be very much like the prequel trilogy where our first introduction to any Sith is an apprentice, right? And for, you know, thinking back to Yoda and Mace Windu wondering, you know, which was killed, the master or the apprentice when Darth Maul went the way of the dodo, or at least seemed <laughs> to, right? So yeah, evidence does seem to suggest that not only is Chimera a Sith, but that he is actually a Sith Lord, but that he is probably specifically a Sith apprentice and that there is a master lurking around somewhere above him. And related to that, I wanted to talk about the idea of Sith infiltration of the Jedi Order. And that doesn't necessarily have to mean something as literal as it sounds like, right? Like the idea, for example, that if Chimere had been a Jedi and was within the Jedi Order, but was secretly a Sith all along while he was in the Order, that's certainly one way that the Sith could have infiltrated the Jedi Order. But I don't think that's what's happening here in the Acolyte. And if there is any Sith infiltration happening, it's through agents of the Sith rather than the Sith directly themselves. And what's more, there are also people who could be manipulated into doing the Sith's handiwork. I know that a lot of people are focused on Mog Adana right now. He's the Padawan who was being kind of uppity to Vernestra Rowe in the most recent episode. The databank entry about him says that although he's respectful to his elders, he's not afraid to speak truth to power. And we know <laughs> that there is some sort of push for an external review happening that you know the Jedi Order is going to get 
get audited for all intents and purposes. And just as, you know, one scenario option, you can imagine a person like a Senator Raincroft who is initiating this call for an audit and who Vernestra says is no friend of the Jedi. That Senator could be under the influence of a Sith and could be directly under the influence of Sith, like knowingly so, and then deciding to cultivate sources within the Jedi Order to help him with his particular tasks. One of them could be Mogadana, who he could just be friendly with and say, yeah, what kind of stuff are you hearing, Mog? How are things going in there, right? Similar kind of grooming that then Senator and then eventually Chancellor Palpatine was doing with Anakin, where he was hearing about the stuff going on inside the Jedi Order and kind of, you know, manipulating the situation as needed. And that makes me wonder about Palpatine Palpatine as a keen student of history if we're going to eventually learn that he was aware of some of the things that went down in the Acolyte and that gave him any ideas about how he might be able to improve upon what happened in the past and eventually be able to get to not only the downfall of the Republic but of the Jedi Order as well. So those are some of the things I thought we could consider as part of of the question of whether Chimere is actually a Sith Lord and what might be going on with Sith infiltration into the Jedi Order or Sith influence on the Jedi Order in the Acolyte. And that is going to do it for this episode of the podcast. If you enjoy the show, please help me get it out to more people who might enjoy this dose of Star Wars joy. You can learn more about supporting me as an independent creator at patreon.com slash SW7X7 or you can just tell people about the show via you know social media or in person or via algorithms as the case may be whatever you decide to do I would be very grateful for it and it just remains for me to say thank you so much for joining me for this episode as always and may the force be with you wherever in the world you may be 7x7 is not endorsed or sponsored yet by Lucasfilm Limited, Disney, or 20th Century Fox, and is intended for entertainment and information purposes only. Star Wars, the Star Wars logo, all names and pictures of Star Wars characters, vehicles, and any other Star Wars related items are registered trademarks and or copyrights of Lucasfilm Limited, but their respective trademark and copyright holders may the force be with them. All original content is copyrighted by Star Wars 7x7. We hope you love it.